kingdom of God. Have you ever heard of the kingdom? Well, you should, because the kingdom of God is within you. Hi, I'm Pastor Leon Threet, and I'm honored to be, to be able to share and minister to you this day on Sea Life Ministries on Sea Life TV. What a great opportunity. I thank God for the Chesser family for the privilege to be a part of the Sea Life Ministry. And tonight, or today, I'd like to share a little from the premise of the kingdom of God, the living kingdom, the kingdom of God. You know, we hear that term quite a bit, the kingdom of God. And often we're not fully sure of what's really being conveyed, the kingdom of God. And so I'd like to take a little time today and share a little of what I believe the Holy Spirit has shared with me over the years on the kingdom of God. You know, Jesus's prayer or instructions to his uh, disciples as he was talking about prayer, they asked him how to pray. And he mentioned in Matthew 6 and 10, he said, pray that thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we know that one of the most urgent things that God would want us to seek is to seek the kingdom of God and, and so it would manifest in the earth. What, a, what an idea, what a privilege. Now, so first of all, let's think about it. Let's examine the concept of kingdom. Someone had said that many of us in the Western world, we really don't understand kingdoms because we've grown and, and, and come through a system of, of a democratic system where everyone has rights and everyone can vote and everyone has a, a voice. But in the kingdom, there's really only one voice, and that is the king. It's called a monarch. A monarch is ruled by one person and not by a democratic vote of many. And so often we miss out on the privilege and the wealth of knowing and understanding the value of having a king. And so Jesus is instructing his disciples to pray that the kingdom of God would manifest. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done. And as I said, that's in Matthew 6 and 10. God wants his kingdom to manifest in the earth. Now, this whole concept of kingdom, the kingdom actually means the rule of God, the, the system in which God himself rules. He would reign. He would have final say. He would administrate over his kingdom. And so it's clear if he's praying that thy kingdom come, that there must be a kingdom. I think it's interesting that when you look at the ministry of John the Baptist and the ministry of Jesus himself, they both preach the kingdom of God, that the kingdom of God has come, the kingdom of God is near, the kingdom of God is present. In essence, the rule of God is in the earth today. The rule of God. Thy kingdom come, the, the rule of God where God's will is being uh, fulfilled in the earth, that God's will would be manifesting in the lives of creation, in the lives of, 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 of the people of God, that God would have his will to be fulfilled in our lives. And I just think that's a wonderful, wonderful truth, that God wants his will to be fulfilled in the earth. Thy will be done on earth. Now think about this. If God's will is in the earth, if his kingdom would manifest, the kingdom of God, the rule of God, the same way that heaven is ruled by God, that God would be able to rule that way in the earth. What, a, what an awesome truth that really is. There would be no sickness. There would be no poverty. There would be no uh, oppression. There would be no death. Uh, man would experience heaven on earth. Now think about that. God wants his kingdom to be in the earth like his kingdom or rule is in the heavens, in the, in the third heaven. And if it's so, then man lacks nothing. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done. I pray that that would be the case for you and I, that God's will, God's rule, God's reign, God's authority over poverty, sickness, death, hell, and the grave would manifest in our lives. That's God's will for you. Those of you who are watching today, I want you to know that God's will and God's desire above all things that his kingdom would manifest in your life, that you would come into a relationship with the king first and foremost, and then the king's will would manifest in your life. 
in your finances, in your home, with your children, in your marriage. What an awesome truth. Thy kingdom come. Now in Colossians 1, verses 12 and 13, if I may, that God has desired and placed us in the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians, the first chapter, verses 12 and 13, reading from the New King James Version. The word tells us that we, the Apostle Paul says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified or made us meet or acceptable to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed or transformed us or trans, transfigured us into the kingdom of his dear son. God has moved us out of the realm or out of the control. God's plan, God's desire, if you're in Christ, if you know the king, if you're born into the kingdom, then you've been delivered from the control of darkness. You've been delivered out of the out of the realm of darkness, out of the rule of darkness, out of the dictatorship of, the, of Satan, of the enemy, and you've been translated or moved into or under the very dominion of God's dear son, Jesus Christ, where the king reigns, where the, where the kingdom of God really is. It's the kingdom. You know, ultimately, as we read that, ultimately we know the entire earth will be transformed into the very kingdom of God, where not only is it just spiritually so, and it would also be naturally so. It would, it would be so in the natural that the kingdom of God would literally, literally come into the earth and manifest in full manifestation the rule of God. Now we know that Jesus is the king and he's ruling in the earth through his church. He's ruling in the earth through the person of the Holy Spirit. He's still exercising dominion. He's exercising authority in the earth as the king. But there will be a day that the full manifestation of the kingdom of God will literally come down into the earth and have absolute preeminent authority over everything. Now, in the spirit realm, then we can still do this. And that's one of, one of the things I want you to hear tonight. Uh, is that you can you and I have been given the privilege and the opportunity to exercise authority in the behalf of the king while we're in the earth today. Now, as I mentioned, there will there will be a time when the new heaven and the new earth will manifest in the earth, uh, and even before then, we know that the the kingdom of God, the the literal kingdom, will manifest over the nation of Israel over Jerusalem, 1,700, no, 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles is, an, is amazing truth. You go to the uh, 17th uh, chapter of Revelation, you read about that. But it will literally take a, th a literal form sitting over the Jerusalem. But until then, we, we still have a responsibility to exercise authority and dominion in the earth, representing the king. Let me share what I mean. It's God's desire that you and I would experience the kingdom of God even now. Now, I know, as I mentioned, I know there will be a day when the kingdom will take on a literal, tangible form in the earth. But even before the kingdom takes tangible form over the nation of Jerusalem, we know that we can exercise a degree of authority and dominion in the earth. That was God's desire, and it is God's desire, that we would not be subject to the forces of darkness. That's why he translated us, translated us out of the kingdom or the control of darkness and, and, and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We know that that's God's desire, but there require, it requires a submission to the king, it requires an understanding of how the kingdom of God works, and prayerfully I have, have enough time to go into a little of how the kingdom of God works. Because it's not enough to be in the kingdom, we need to know how to function in the kingdom. So we're kind of laying the groundwork for that right now. We know that in St. John 10 and 10, Jesus said that I have come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. We know in the first part of that verse, in verse 10, he says the thief has come, but for to steal, kill, and to destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. Now, when did he give us this life? He gave us that life when he himself paid the ultimate price to make it available. Now, we receive that life when we receive Jesus Christ into our hearts. 
And so the kingdom of God is within us. Now, I know a lot we talk about the kingdom manifesting uh, in our midst in a tangible kingdom sense, but the kingdom of God is already present in the hearts of the redeemed. Now, that's important to remember that, that the kingdom of God is not just future. The kingdom of God, kingdom of God is present. It's a now system in which God rules and exercises dominion in the earth, dominion over sickness, over poverty, over death, and over hell, and over the grave. We're not waiting to die before we enter the kingdom. Jesus died and made the kingdom of God available to us today. You can be in the kingdom and operate as a vessel in the king's dominion, in the king's kingdom, even now. That's an important truth. So in the kingdom, now this is that, that one of the points I mentioned about, about uh, often we are, we're misunderstanding, we, we, we fail to recognize that uh, how the kingdom works because we in the Western world, we think of a democracy or a democratic system, but in the kingdom of God, it's really about the king. Think about that. You know, we, we have a tendency, in a democracy, it's about us. We have the rights. And we have say, and we can vote, and we can, we can give our opinions on things. But in the kingdom of God, it's really not about us. It's really all about the king. And that's where many of us at times are challenged because we want it to be about us. But in the kingdom of God, it's about the king. And you think about that. It's about the king. It's the will of the king. In any kingdom where there is a monarch, someone who rules, they have final say. And it's really about them and not about the individuals in the kingdom. Now, the wonderful thing about our king is that he shares in the rule of his kingdom. He is a benevolent, gracious king that gives and gives and gives. He gave himself for his own kingdom. But it, for us, as we approach him, we should recognize that it's about the king. It's about honoring the king. It's about living for the king. It's about the will of the king. Now, if we make it about the will of the king, then the king is able to bless us and, and bestow his, his gracious hand upon us and do wonderful things in and through us. But for us, we must remember that it's first and foremost about the king. In every kingdom, the king is responsible for the subjects in his or her kingdom. The king is responsible. And so one of, one of the things I want, want to emphasize is that Jesus is responsible for caring for you and I. He made it his responsibility to, res, to provide everything you and I need to fulfill his will in his kingdom. He made every provision that we have need of to fulfill his will in his kingdom. The king is responsible for provisions in his kingdom. So look at this in Colossians 1, verses 15 through 19. That's a lot of wonderful things here, but listen to this. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven and on the earth. All things were made by the king. All things were made by Jesus Christ. Now listen to this. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Remember I mentioned about the king, that it's really about the king. Everything was made by him. And everything was made for him. I think that's awesome. That it's, a, it's really about him. Verse 17 says, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. The king, King Jesus, everything is sustained and contained and maintained by him, the king. He holds all things together. He holds all things together. It says here that in him all things consist. Verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and that in all things he may have the preeminence. In all things, Jesus Christ would have the preeminence. He would have the rule. He would have final say. He would be the center of attention. He's the only one that's worthy or entitled to be the center of all attention, Jesus Christ, the preeminent king. Verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him, all the fullness should dwell. It pleased the Father that all of the fullness of the Godhead should dwell. I just think that's so amazing that Jesus Christ is the center of the kingdom. He's the reason for the kingdom. He's the reason that we live. He's the reason why we do everything we should do. 
Now he shares in that and he, he, he's a gracious, loving king, but it's really about the kingdom. Now let's talk a little bit about how to get into the kingdom. You have to be born into the kingdom. In, in uh, St. John, the third chapter, Jesus said that you must be born again. You have to be born into the kingdom. You're not, you're not drafted in. You don't just, you know, volunteer, okay, I'm in the kingdom. No, you have to be born into the kingdom through the new birth that's offered to us in Jesus Christ. So you must be born into the kingdom. And then uh, once you're in the kingdom, there is the translating work of Jesus Christ working in us to, to operate in the kingdom. It's his kingdom. We are called to be ambassadors in the kingdom. We represent him, the king of kings and Lord of lords. Now, let me talk about one of the most important parts of the kingdom. This is an unusual perspective, but work with me for a moment. The kingdom of God is in the earth today. So who's over the kingdom that's in the earth today? I believe it's the Holy Spirit. I believe the Holy Spirit has come into the earth. Uh, the Father uh, has sent uh, the Holy Spirit, Jesus uh, has baptized and immersed us in his spirit. He's given us the indwelling presence of the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the administrator over the kingdom of God in the earth. The Holy Spirit. That's why his relationship with you is so important. That God would send his spirit, the promise of the Father, to send the Holy Spirit into the earth who would lead and guide us into all truth. That same Holy Spirit is the governor over the kingdom. He's the one that's administrating and orchestrating and guiding and directing and fulfilling the will of, of God Almighty in the earth through the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit, wow, the person of the Holy Spirit is the governor. Now, I thought it was an interesting perspective that often, you know, when you talk about a kingdom, when you talk about a kingdom that's in the earth, uh, the kingdom, let's say, for instance, Eng England would have a kingdom, and then uh, uh, let's say somewhere, somewhere like the Bahamas once was a, a uh, colony of England. And it was interesting enough that the, that the king, or in that point, I think it might even had a queen, would, it would dictate to the Bahamas what it wanted. And there would be assigned to the Bahamas, uh, the islands there, a governor that would administrate there in the Bahamas to to ensure that the will of the king in England would be manifested or fulfilled. Now think about that. So the king or queen in England would send uh, a governor to the islands of, Baha of the Bahamas, and the governor's responsibility would be to administrate there in the islands to ensure that the will of the king or the queen would be fulfilled. Now let's take this into the spirit realm, into the kingdom of God. God Almighty, who's present in the heavens, would send the Holy Spirit, who is in fact God the Spirit, into the earth as the administrator, the governor in the earth to administrate over the kingdom of God to ensure that the will of the Father, the will of God Almighty would be fulfilled in the earth. And he works through his kingdom and primarily through the subjects of the kingdom, the church, the people of God. So we're born into the kingdom and the governor, the Holy Spirit, is in the earth and in our lives to, to fulfill the will of, uh, of Almighty God in the earth realm. Now think about that. That's, that's an awesome perspective. The Holy Spirit is in the earth today to fulfill the will of the Father. He's working through the church. He's working through the body of Christ uh, and to fulfill the will of God Almighty in the earth, the governor, the Holy Spirit. And so God's will is to see his will done on earth as it is in heaven. And the Holy Spirit is, he is the only one in the earth that knows everything. And he's fulfilling the will of God Almighty. He's fulfilling, fulfilling the will of God in the earth. He's causing the will of God that's in heaven to be fulfilled in the earth today. And he's working through you and I, his church. Awesome, awesome truth. The Holy Spirit is the governor to restore the rule of God. He's in the earth to restore the dominion of God. He is in the earth today to restore the, the authority of God in the earth today. And he work, he's working through the church. He's working through you and I who are born into the kingdom of God. I think that's awesome. I reiterate the importance of the kingdom. What, will, what, is, what, is it, what is it like to have the kingdom of God fully manifesting in the earth today? No sickness, no poverty, no death, no bondage. 
uh, that, that, that we literally experience heaven on earth. What a truth. That's God's will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is the desire and the will of our God. The Holy Spirit is the governor of the kingdom. Now let's talk about some other aspects of this kingdom. I think the kingdom of God, we, we've got to understand how powerful this is. The kingdom of God, the rule of God. God wants to rule in the earth. Uh, you know, we see going back into uh, Genesis uh, 3 when Adam gave over the authority of the earth uh, to Satan. He was deceived. Eve was deceived. Adam chose to give it away. And in essence, the, the, the authority of the earth was transferred to the enemy. And so the enemy ruled in the earth. Men were being oppressed with little hope other than God's word that was being conveyed during that time. But then Jesus came and he took back the authority and gave it back to humanity, primarily giving it back to his body, the church. The church has been given the authority to exercise God's rule in the earth, dominion in the earth again, authority over the, uh, the creation once again. It is God's will that we would be uh, above circumstances, not beneath them, not oppressed by the enemy. Jesus came, he says, all authority has been given to me both in heaven and in earth. And we believe and from the word that he's delegated that authority to the church, to the body of Christ in his absence, to exercise in the kingdom of God, the will of God. So let's talk a little bit more about the kingdom, how the kingdom works. So it's not enough just to be in the kingdom. We need to understand how the kingdom operates, how the kingdom works. What's the uniqueness, the creative ability and the, crea the creative uniqueness of this thing we call the kingdom of God, the rule of God, the dominion of God. And we know that ultimately that God rules over all things. And I know at times it doesn't look like he's in charge, but really he, everything is still within his grasp. Everything is still within his reach. He is watching over all of his creation and nothing occurs. Not even one bird falls to the ground without him being fully aware of what's taking place. So God is still in, 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 char in control. He's still in charge of this. Uh, now, we recognize that there's an enemy in the earth and he's, he's creating havoc and death and discord and war and famine all around us, but there, that God is still working mightily through his kingdom. And we need to know that. The kingdom is still working in the earth. The culture of the kingdom, we see the culture of the kingdom is actually, actually the fruit of the spirit. The culture or, or the conduct of the kingdom. I was sharing that verse with someone today, how important it was that even in marriage, even in a relationship, that, that, that the fruit of the Spirit would be manifesting in the hearts of, of God's people. And from Galatians 5 and verse 22, we see the culture or conduct. How should we live? How should we carry ourselves? What should be our behavior in the kingdom of God? Well, we see this in, in, in Galatians 5 and 22 and part of 23 as well. He says, the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's the conduct of the kingdom. That's the, that's the manifestations of the, of the behavior of all of the subjects of the kingdom. We should walk in love. We should have joy, have peace. We should be long-suffering with one another. We should show kindness. We should be good to one another. We should be faithful to our many responsibilities, faithful to our, our spouse, faithful to God. We should be gentle and self-control, self-restraint. That's the conduct and or the behavior and culture of the kingdom of God. What an awesome truth. The constitution of the kingdom is the word of God. So we have the culture or the conduct, which is the fruit of the spirit, and we have the constitution of the kingdom, which is God's word. You know, in the, in the United States, we have a constitution. 1776, it was ratified in the Constitution, implemented and put in place and so on. And so uh, the Constitution is important. We, 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 we have Bill of Rights and we have the Declaration of Independence. I think Declaration of Independence was uh, actually 1776. Constitution was 11 years later written and signed and ratified by the 13 states there. And uh, so the Constitution is, is, is the, the governing statement. It, it's what sets the the United States apart. It sets the conduct. It sets 
our, our, our means of governing in place. It's, it's how a rule of law is instituted and, and established. The Constitution, it, is, it sets behavior in place. It sets the responsibilities of government and its citizens in place. So it is with the scriptures. The Bible is the constitution of God's kingdom. It is what God has said is the will of God. It is, the, it is how things are to be run. It's the rule of the, of the governing body. It's the rule of, of conduct. It's God's responsibilities and man's responsibilities. It shows us what God will do and what man should do. And so it's, it's the constitution of the kingdom of God, the Bible, God's word. We see in, in St. John 1, 1 through 5, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God's Word is what, uh, what He has graced us with to, to show us how we are to live in His kingdom. It shows us how we are to carry ourselves in the kingdom. And what's the protocol of the kingdom? The protocol is praise and worship. Interesting. <laughs> Psalms 100 Verses 1 through 5, make a joyful noise, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Worship is, is, is the protocol of the kingdom. We should worship God. We see this in St. John 4, 23 and 24. It says, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For God seek for such to worship him, to worship him in spirit and truth. God's, God's will and God's protocol in his kingdom is that we would be a people who knew how to praise and worship him, that we would acknowledge the king and honor the king and worship the king. The language of the kingdom, prayer is the language of the kingdom. We, we, we pray God's will. We pray God's word. The, the language of the king, kingdom is prayer. Not only praying in your understanding, but praying in the spirit or praying in tongues. So the language of the kingdom is prayer. So we've looked at a number of things. We said the, the culture and the conduct of the kingdom is the fruit of the spirit. We said the constitution of God's kingdom is his word. And we said that the protocol of the kingdom was praise and worship. And the language of the kingdom is, in fact, prayer. The manifestation of the kingdom of God is the spiritual gifts. We see this in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 12. And 7 through 11, he talks about the manifestation of the Spirit, and he lists uh, certain gifts. He says the word of wisdom and word of knowledge and discernment of spirit. He says that faith and gifts of healing and working of miracles and prophecy and tongues and interpretation of tongues, these are the manifestations of the kingdom. I, I think that's awesome. The kingdom of God should manifest in the earth. We should see God's rule in the earth, and we do so by the spiritual gifts that he's graced us with. Now, the Holy Spirit, all nine of those gifts work by the leading and the administrating of the governor, the Holy Spirit. He's the governor. He administrates over the spiritual gifts. They work at his direction, not at our own choosing. We don't pick and choose of the gifts and, and we want to work in them at our own will. They work by the leading and the directing and the administrating of the governor, the Holy Spirit. So spiritual gifts are the manifestation of God's kingdom. And then we see the operational functions of God's kingdom. And that's the ministry gifts. We said spiritual gifts were the manifestation of the kingdom. The operational function of the kingdom is ministry gifts. And that's where we see where God places into the church uh, apostles, apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers for the work of the ministry, for the edifying and the building up of the body of Christ. So we see these gifts, these ministry gifts working to equip and to empower and strengthen the church so that we no longer are children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. So that's the operational function of the kingdom of God. You know, God has a wonderful system in, at work here. The kingdom of God is an awesome system of rule, a system of governing by God himself. It, it was always God's will to rule in his own kingdom. It was always God's will to rule over his people because he's the only one that is able to rule with a perfect heart. God's never challenged by pride. He's never, he's never competing, competitive and competing against anyone. He's never envious or jealous in any way. God is a perfect ruler, a perfect king, a perfect God. He rules over in his own, in his own kingdom. He's the only one that's really rightfully uh, able to rule over humanity. You know, when he was in the, we see this in the, in the case with the nation of Israel. 
the nation of Israel wanted to be like the other kingdoms around them. And they tell Samuel, Samuel, we want a king. And Samuel is troubled by this. And he, he, he goes to God and says, God, they've asked for a king. They, they've rejected me. And, and God tells Samuel, they haven't rejected you as the priest in the, in, the, in the kingdom. They've rejected me as the God over their kingdom. I was ruling them. I was their king. And they wanted a natural king. You know, men have a tendency to want natural leadership, but God is far more than just a natural leader. He's a perfect king ruling over our hearts and over our lives. He, he, he's able to give us what no other is able to give us. He's a wonderful king. And so he's ruling and reigning in the earth today. So we see that he, the kingdom of God has a manifestation of spiritual gifts. The operation of, and function of the kingdom is our ministry gifts. And the provisions of the kingdom is a kingly supply. The king provides for his kingdom. The king provides. In Philippians 4.19, it says, My God shall, shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God supplies for his kingdom. He's able to meet our needs. He's able to take care of us. And I want to encourage you to trust that. You know, in, um, we see this, that principle of provisions. He says, seek ye first in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his righteous way of ruling and leading and guiding and governing. And then he says, all these other things shall be added unto you. If we seek the kingdom of God and God's way of doing things, his righteous way of doing things, he promises in Matthew 6, 33, that all of the other things we have need of, provisions and house and home and family and, and, and every natural need being met, if we would do what he's called us to do and seek him, his kingdom first and his righteous way of doing things. What a precious truth. So we have a kingly supply. Principles of the kingdom. Let's talk a little about the principles of the kingdom. First of all, let me rehearse that. Provisions of the kingdom is a, a kingly supply. Operational function of the kingdom is ministry gifts. Manifestation of the kingdom is spiritual gifts. And the language of the kingdom is prayer. The protocol of the kingdom is praise and worship. The constitution of God's kingdom is the word of God. And the conduct or culture of the kingdom is the fruit of the spirit. What a truth. Let's talk a little about the principles of the kingdom. The kingdom resides in our hearts. I know that often we're looking for an external, tangible kingdom. But first and foremost, we need to recognize that God's rule starts in the heart of man. God wants to first, before he rules what, what goes on around you, God wants to rule on what's going on inside of you, letting him rule in our hearts. For the kingdom of God is within you, the word tells us. And so God wants to rule from your heart. And that's a wonderful truth. The kingdom operates by faith. We talk about the principles of the kingdom. The, ki the kingdom is a kingdom of faith. Faith is an absolute must. Hebrews 11, 6 tells us, Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the kingdom of God is a kingdom that we operate by faith. It's not just faith to get into the kingdom. It's faith to operate in the kingdom. Think about that. It takes faith to operate in the kingdom. You must believe God, and you must believe God's word, and we must function by a life of faith. The word tells us that the just shall live by faith. It's not a visitation in faith, it's a habitation of faith. We need to stay in a place of absolute confidence and trust in God. And so faith is an absolute must when you talk about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God produces by seed. We have to sow. We see this in Mark uh, 4, 26 through 29. It tells us the kingdom of God is like a man who scatters seed on the ground. So the kingdom of God works by seed. We need to sow. Anything that you want, now think this is a powerful truth. Anything you want, you need to sow toward it. Seed is the kingdom of God works by seed. You sow. If you want if you want something financially, you sow into the kingdom of God, you sow financially. If you want uh, good things to come out of a relationship, you must sow good things into a relationship. If you want good things to come from your children, you need to sow good things into your children. The kingdom of God manifests and produces by seed. As if a man was to cast seed into the ground. The kingdom of God is likened unto a man who, who scatters seed onto the ground. So one of the supreme principles of God's kingdom is seed.
seed time and harvest time. It operates by sowing seed. The kingdom of God is activated by speech or by the tongue. Now, principles of the kingdom, we said that, we said that, the, that the kingdom of God is in the heart. We said that the kingdom of God operates by faith. And we said the king, kingdom of God operates by seed. And then lastly, we say the kingdom of God is activated by the tongue. It's very important that we guard what we say when you're talking about the kingdom of God. You see, the angels are actually listening, watching, ready to assist those who are heirs of salvation because the word says that they, they hearken to the voice of God's word. And so it's very important that you and I are speaking the constitution and we're operating by faith and we're saying what God says because everything God has planned and purposed operates by his word. And so we must give voice to God's word. Angels are assisting and responding to the voice of God's word. Everything is based on the word of God. And so it's important. It's vitally important that you and I are speaking by uh, the word of God. We're speaking the word and the, that the kingdom of God operates by speech. It's activated by speech. You know, I say the earth itself is a, is a, a spoken earth. It's a, it operates by speech. Even, even creation operates. Animals respond to speech. If you have a pet, you can train your pet to respond to your, your voice and respond to your commands. Speech. It's been said and proven that even your plants respond to your words. Words are important. What if, I say this sometimes here at Christian Faith Assembly, I say, what if you got everything you said, no matter what, whether it's good or bad, what if you got everything you said, if you said it and it manifested, would you like what you got? If everything you spoke would quickly manifest, would you like what manifested? That's how we should live. We should recognize that our speech has volume. It has value. It has worth. It, 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 it literally creates the world that we live in. Uh, in Proverbs uh, 18 and 21, it says, death and life are in the power of the, of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You're going to have what you consistently say. The kingdom of God operates by speech. Now think about that. We have his word and we're living by his word. And so we operate in his kingdom and our words carry weight. I want to challenge you uh, to begin to speak only what God would have you to speak. Never speak what you feel that's contrary to the word. Guard your tongue. Guard not to speak or reinforce what you see, what you sense, but speak what God has said. That's how the kingdom of God works. It works by speech. Wow. A lot of things to consider as we have discussed and examined the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is in the earth today. God's rule, God's system of ruling, God's system of, of exercising dominion in the earth is in the earth today to cause his will to be done on the earth as his will is being done in heaven. I assure you that heaven is not in rebellion against God. And therefore, we must bring... Uh, a high degree of dominion and authority to the earth. We must command and commission the earth to come under the authority and dominion of Jesus Christ. He's placed us in the earth to exercise authority and dominion in the earth as his ambassadors, as, as stewards, as overseers and administrators, along with the leading of the Holy Spirit, to see God's will done in the earth as his will is being done in heaven. Thank you for the time I've been able to share with you on the kingdom of God. I've shared a few scriptures and I've shared a lot of things with you. I pray that you'll take the time, go back over and look at some of the things we've discussed tonight and begin to examine the power, the importance and the preeminence of God's kingdom that's in the earth today. And I thank you for watching uh, Wisdom for Living uh, program and, and what we've brought to you tonight or today. And I just thank you that you've been encouraged and blessed. And until next time, this is Pastor Leon Threat on Wisdom for Living. God bless you and have a great evening in the Lord.